props. You can either buy them or you can make them. Personally, I prefer to make them. It's cheaper, you get them quicker, and you get a custom piece that's made just for you and your photography. Um, to this Today, I'm going to jump into a very simple make of making walking sticks for 12-inch action figures. Let's jump in. So we start uh, by measuring the action figure. I'm using a 12-inch action figure, so the stick is about 11 inches tall. And I also take a note of where the hand hits the stick so we know exactly where to put decorations if we want to put like a handle on this stick. I'm using quarter inch doweling for this. I have a four foot length of poplar and a three foot length of uh, oak uh, that I bought at Lowe's, uh, the local hardware store. Um, and I'm gonna cut each to length about 11 inches tall using this uh, small little uh, wood saw. Cue the sawing montage. So I just, I just cut uh, four pieces to length. Uh, I'm only gonna make three walking sticks, but this will give me one extra piece in case I screw something up. The doweling itself is really smooth when it comes from the store. So I use a Dremel and a sanding disc to just rough up the outside smooth edges and try to make them more rough as if they were carved from a tree limb instead of coming from a nice factory. I find throughout the process trying to make these as realistic as possible and is a benefit and it just makes the final product that much more interesting. And that will when I'm done with the Dremel, I just sand it with 220 grit sandpaper and 120 grit sandpaper just to smooth out all the little rough edges. And then when I'm done that, I just clean up my workspace with a vacuum just to get rid of the dust so it's nice and clean for the next steps. So I have these sticks prepared and I'm ready to basically paint them up and decorate them. The first stick uh, is a nice oak with a nice, uh, a little bit of roughness of the factory and some grain. So I think I'm just gonna uh, make this just a straight normal stick. The poplar stick um, doesn't have a lot of grain to it, so it needs more interest. So I think I'm gonna to try to bend this one uh, using some techniques to kind of make it look like it came from a, a wavy tree limb as opposed to a nice straight limb. And this last stick, I think I'm gonna add a nice handle so the, uh, the person carrying the stick has a nice comfortable place to put his hand as he's walking around. So just to save time, I'm gonna start by making the handle part, uh, which I'm gonna to try to make look like a leather wrapping. For that, I'm using this muslin, which is just kind of like a unprocessed cotton uh, that I got at a fabric store. It's like $8 a yard. And I'm just cutting off a couple 12 inch strips that are about quarter inch wide. Uh, and I'll use that to mimic the uh, leather effect. And as per normal, I only really need one of these strips, but I'm gonna cut two just because if I screw something up, then I'll have a backup. Now we need to color these uh, strips. I'm gonna paint them probably uh, when I'm done, but if the paint chips, I wanna have a nice solid color underneath. So I'm gonna dye them using acrylic inks and a little bit of water. So I mix the inks in with the water. I'm using a carbon black ink for darkness and a uh, burnt sienna ink for uh, that rich brown leathery color. And then I take the muslin and I dip it in the ink mixture and make sure that it's all covered. Then I pull it out using pliers so I don't get the ink on my hands, although it does wash off fairly nicely. And that way I can spread it out on some tin foil to let it, let it dry. And it, it takes about an hour to dry. So while I'm waiting for my wrapping to dry, I'm gonna move on to creating that wavy stick out of that poplar. And what, what I'm doing is making a jig by putting a straight line down a piece of wood and then putting some finishing nails into it. Um, and what that will do, it, it will allow me to guide the wood into a specific shape. The I will eventually uh, boil the wood to make it nice and soft, and then the wood will then fit around the finishing nails, creating a nice wavy look uh, to give it that uh, bent stick look that I'm looking for. 
And I want to make the stick wavy, but I don't want to put too much of a bend in it. Otherwise the wood will break when it finally gets put into the jig. One final fit and we're good to go. Now that the jig's made, I take the doweling up to my kitchen and I stick it in some boiling water. Um, and I let it boil for about 15 minutes until the wood is nice and soft and it bends when I press it with a, uh, a pair of tongs. Once the wood is ready, I remove it from the water with a pair of tongs. After that, it's actually cool enough for my fingers. So I just use my fingers to put the doweling into place along the jig and uh, fit it in. As you can see, it's slightly curved. And once that's done, I leave it to thoroughly dry, which takes about another hour. Now that everything's dry, I can start assembling some pieces. So I take the muslin bit that I have and I want to wrap it around the stick right where the hand is. So I'm going to use some Eileen's tacky glue, which is a white glue that dries clear. I'm just going to take a brush and dip it in the glue and just put it along the edge of the stick where I want the muslin to go. Uh, this will allow the muslin to stick to the stick uh, so it doesn't uh, flop around until everything's nice and set. Once the glue is in place, I take the muslin and I wrap it around the stick uh, once. And then I slowly work it down until it covers up the entire area where I want the wrapping to be. While I'm doing this, I want the wrapping to be as evenly spread out as possible to kind of give it that professional quality look. And when I get to the bottom, I add a little bit more glue uh, just to give the last final, uh, last final piece a place to stick. And then I cut it off with a pair of scissors and I'm good to go. Now I want to put some finishing on the top and bottom of that wrapping. So I'm using this wire, which is really just 0.2 millimeter uh, lead solder, I believe. And it, I just wrap it around the stick uh, about three or four wrappings just to give the top and bottom a little bit of uh, like a metal ferrule that will keep the uh, wrapping ends in place. And while I'm wrapping, I try to make sure that the wire stays as tightly together as possible. It's a little bit finicky at first, but we'll uh, tighten that up a bit later. So when I'm done the top part, I flip over the stick and do the exact same thing the bottom part of the wrapping. And once I, all the wrapping and the wires in place, I make a mixture of glue, which is just about two or three parts of water to uh, one part of the Eileen sticky glue. It's not an exact process, but I make a nice uh, uh, wash of glue and I put that over top of the wire and the muslin wrapping, just to uh, keep everything in place. Uh, so it's nice and tough and sturdy. So when you're sticking it in the action figure's hands, that it's going to last that repeated uh, rubbing back and forth. And when it's all nice and covered, I put it aside and leave it to dry. So I'm trying to decide exactly how I want to finish these things off. Um, the uh, oak or maple, whatever this is, wood, actually has a little bit of grain in it. So I think I'm gonna to try to finish these off with just some washes uh, to try to kind of get a stained look uh, and try to keep that wood grain that's in there, that's naturally in the wood. Uh, may as well use that to my advantage. The poplar stick, the poplar stick, um, is not, doesn't look that great um, as far as wood. It just looks like, uh, like almost like what a 
popsicle stick or a, uh, a chopsticks would look like. So there's no wood, natural wood grain in here. So I think I'm gonna spend more time uh, painting this one and trying to add my own uh, wood grain in there. So that's, I think that's the strategy I'm gonna go with. So the popular stick is nice and bent, but it has very little grain. Uh, so I'm not gonna to worry too much about trying to maintain that grain with my paints. So I'm just gonna cover it in a golden brown craft paint, which is I got at Michael's or Walmart, um, and just cover the whole thing. And then do a nice dry brushing of a slightly lighter color just to give it a little bit of a uh, paint texture to it that kind of makes it look like wood. I want to add a little bit of weathering. That's all the grit and grime that happens to objects over time. So what I, I've taken some darker washes. Uh, this is a uh, dark earth mud wash. And I'm just dipping it with a brush and just rubbing it on the uh, stick. And then I'll wipe it off uh, and it'll just leave the dark, darker parts in the crevices of the stick, kind of giving it that worn look. So that, the stick looks good, so I'm gonna switch over to the straight oak stick. And this one here, um, all I really wanna do is try to preserve some of the grain in the, in the wood. Um, so I'm going to use a raw, uh, raw umber ink, acrylic ink, and cover it uh, almost like using a stain uh, over the stick. And that will allow the lighter parts to stay kind of a yellowy color but it will darken up the natural grain that's still left in the doweling. As you can see, it goes on almost exactly like a wood stain. And like the previous uh, stick, I am doing some weathering. I've taken a fine brush and adding some darker washes to various select parts of the stick, trying to capture those natural divots that came from the factory. Just adding a little bit of darkening to the, the stick and then wiping it off. And what that does is it just adds some darkness to the crevices and just gives it that worn look, like the stick has seen a lot of action and been used for many, many, many hikes. All right, that looks good. So let's move on to our final stick, which is the one with the wrapping. I'm gonna start by giving it this almost the same paint job, but I'm using the uh, uh, Burnt Umber ink just to give it a nice dark texture. I want this to almost look like a, like a mahogany type wood, or at least a darker reddish finish. So I mix that with just a dot of the black ink, and then I just paint it on everywhere. At first, the idea was to paint the wrapping using some paint, uh, but when I saw how well the ink was working with the grain, I decided to paint the whole stick, including the wrapping, with the burnt sienna. Then for weathering, I'm doing the, basically the exact same thing, taking some Nuln oil and some Agrax Earthshade and just moving them into the crevices and then wiping them off to give it that really old age look. The process for aging goes on multiple times. You almost want to build it up over, over uh, multiple iterations. So I put on a bit of wash, wipe it off, see what, I'll, see what needs more wash, and just repeat the process until I'm happy with uh, the, the final product. So 
So for the wrapping itself, I decided to go with the Agrax Earthshade, which is a nice dark wash that I that kind of gives it that leathery look. Um, and I'm going to use that on the wrapping to just sell the fact that this wrapping is a nice leathery look and it still brings out all the textures. And then after I let it dry and put on a nice uh, coat of varnish, this is the final product. And I must say, I think these look fantastic and I'm super happy with the results. In fact, I was so happy that I rushed out and created an image using one of these sticks. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.